Entrepreneur and Shark Tank celebrity delivers a very passionate keynote speech on the first day of Bitcoin Miami as he stood before tens of thousands of institutional investors to discuss the importance of the regulation for crypto and the ecosystem. The conference has since ended but Leary says it will do crypto assets like Bitcoin a whole lot of good and stabilise them all. In a recent interview, the businessman discusses a whole variety of topics including inflation, the risk of recession and the need for suitable regulations for crypto space and how retail investors can correctly position themselves now before the big investors get into the space. O'Leary also explains that inflation is bound to blow over soon. So now I'm going to take you to the interview with Kevin O'Leary. But before I do, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so you do not miss any more of my videos. So the market's building in eight Fed hikes, 25 basis points at a time. I don't think that happens. Um, right now, we've got a lot of uh, uncertainty in the market. you got the Russian-Ukraine thing. Uh, you have this pandemic uh, you know, COVID cases. I'm here in Manhattan. I think we're up 80% last week. Everybody's getting COVID again. But because so many people are vaxxed, it's not traumatic, as traumatic an outcome. But still, it's on the uh, nerves investors to see people locked down in Shanghai. All that's coming. But, you know, I think the Fed is, is posing with a, a strong stick. But a lot of the um, inflationary concerns, and let me give you the measures that I look at. I've got investments in like 36 private companies from from insecticide commercial kitchens companies that service wireless charging i'm all over the map and and they're private so i get the tear sheets of the sales every week i see zero slowdown right now we can't even hire people so if someone's going to see inflation or or at least a recession first it's going to be me and i don't see it yet but the reason i say that is i look at spot pricing of trucking so you remember uh 90 days ago, we were up like 30% in spot trucking to get you get your product or service from LA to uh, New York, you know, just to buy any kind of transportation. Those prices have collapsed 35%. So truckers are back at work. Things are looking much better. Uh, inflation, I think, is a transitory element, at least 50% of it. So I'm not as bearish as the pundits are, and I'm investing accordingly because right now, with a two and change 10 year and inflation at call at six, I would never buy that bond. That's stupid. You're going to get slaughtered on that. I think it's better to stay the course on equities with your pricing power in large corporations. And that's my strategy. You know, in inflationary times, and you can go back through three cycles of inflation, companies that have pricing power that have positive business models and less debt on their balance sheet generally perform very well because they can pass on their costs to investors and to clients that are buying their services and goods. And so you, I prefer to have that than the bonds in the same company because I know with a 100% you know, outcome what I'm going to get paid back and when. If I have a long duration bond and inflation is six and I'm paying 3.2%, which is sort of the average of corporate paper right now, that's a really bad place to put capital to work. So I'd much rather go in inequities. And, you know, you, you have to kind of take a position in looking at, at at equities that very often the best time to invest is when everybody's going the other way, the lemming effect, you know, the penguins going off the cliff model. Tech has been cut in half, and yet the growth rates of the companies have not slowed at all. There's no evidence that growth rates have slowed in mega cap internet giants. Zero, even the Chinese companies. But the prices have been cut in half because everybody's got concerns for whatever reason they've got. So I'm an investor. I mean, you know, I look at the the most hated Chinese companies, and I understand why everybody hates them. It's a really bad zip code right now. But Tencent and Alibaba, my goodness. (laughs) Like, you know, I, I bought those things three Mondays ago when some analysts called them uninvestable in uh in the u.s and they're up 32 percent even in a crappy market so i'm sorry i look at growth i look at free cash flow i look at balance sheet i don't listen to people talking i look at cash flow that's what matters o'leary then continues to talk about the crypto space and why he's invested in 32 different positions he also explains that the crypto space is here to stay and not just because of the hype and many top crypto assets add a lot of economic value. He gives the examples of Polygon, Helion, and Solana. 
He also adds that he doesn't need all of the assets to win. He only needs one or two and he is set for life. He then continued to say this, and before I show you guys, please, but if you are watching this video, make sure you subscribe so you do not miss any more of our videos. Ethereum software, Polygon software, HBAR software, uh, any of these projects, you know, from Helium, Avalanche, all software. And the only reason they'll survive long term is they bring some kind of economic value to the table. So give me Polygon, which I just took an investment in on Sandeep's last deal. Basically says, look, let's aggregate transactions and push them through Ethereum at one transactions, cut gas fees by a huge amount, which works in India. Well, why wouldn't I invest in that? That's a great idea. I mean, there's real economic value there. Uh, same with Helium, if it's going to change telco. I like that idea. Uh, Solana, is it going to speed up blockchain? Well, Sam Bankman-Fried says, yes, why not put a 5% allocation into that? I don't know who's going to win. I got 32 positions. I only need two of them to work and I've made a shitload of money. So it, it doesn't, I look at it in the nascent days of the internet in the nineties. Um, yeah, some of these are going to be pets.com, but others are going to bring tremendous value and be the Googles and the Microsofts of their generation. The whole idea that crypto is worthless, that's stupid. It's here to stay. And the only reason it's here to stay is I can, I just a couple of weeks ago told a, an international speaking agency that wanted to hire me in a country I'll leave nameless. They wanted to ACH me the, the foreign currency transferred in the U.S. dollars. It was going to take three weeks. I said, never going to do it. Just pay me in USDC. If you can do that, I'll do the deal. And I was able to pay the agents, every all the expenses, everything in one second. So why wouldn't stablecoin be a long-term great payment system for everybody if i'm using it now and i have to you know push back on people saying well i can't do that i said well, then i can't come and speak you pay me usdc or give me another stable coin i don't care which one that way i can just put it through my account and pay everybody in in two seconds so that's why i know that's going to stay plus you've got bills coming from senators and yada 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 look there's value in these protocols they're just software Lastly, Kevin O'Leary talks about the adoption of Bitcoin and says that the adoption has not even happened yet and how institutional investors have only managed to push it to one trillion dollars and how that is just a speck of dust compared to where it actually can be. He then goes on to say how much further we have to go and how this is just the beginning for everything. We're nowhere in the adoption. The truth is that there's no foreign sovereign funds. There's no uh, institutional capital. We're nowhere. We're nowhere. We're nothing. I mean, everybody's excited about Bitcoin. The fact is, you know, sovereign funds globally, which have most of the capital and pension plans, U.S. stateside, zero, nothing. So for all the excitement, um, we've got a long way to go. And they're never going to invest in it until we get policy and we get regulated. And that's the whole investment thesis. The whole idea is you're getting ahead of the institution here. If you believe that it has economic value and you put a portfolio together, you're going to get in long before a trillion dollars worth of, of capital comes in this market. Bitcoin itself is not a trillion dollars. That's nothing. It's nothing in the constants of financial assets. The whole market, three trillion. That's nothing. I know it sounds like a big number. Nothing. It's nothing. You compare it to real estate or even gold, nothing. And so the, that's why the, there's an opportunity here. And, you know, you don't have to be a crypto cowboy. You have to think methodically. If there's real economic value, you position yourself now, and I suggest here's how you do it. I make the assumption, I could be wrong, but in the next 12, 10, 12 years, crypto will be the 12th sector of the S&P. There's 11 sectors. If you look at how a sovereign fund or a pension plan manages capital, let's say they have $100 billion. That's the world I work in. They allocate up to 20% in any one sector and up to 5% in any one name. So if you're really bullish, like I am on crypto, you put 20% of the operating company's capital into crypto and no more than 5% into any one coin, token, blockchain, or level two, whatever you want to call it. And that's what I've done. I got 32 positions. I got 20% of the capital tied up. It's volatile as hell, but I'm okay with it because I make the assumption at some point all of this policy that's being proposed will be adopted and then Katie bar the doors. Then we'll have a real asset. We'll have, you know, I, I know it's really trite to say, oh, Bitcoin's less than a trillion. A trillion dollars is dog shit. 
in the institutional world. It's nothing. So that was the interview, guys. We wanted to try and keep it short and sweet for you to be able to listen to everything that he had to say without kind of cutting out all of the main points. If you guys want to stay up to date with all the latest crypto news on the highest cryptos and some of the best ones to maybe get invested in right now, subscribe to my channel as I'm going to be bringing you guys some of the latest news on all the hottest new cryptos right now, which ones you should keep an eye out for and which ones the biggest celebrities and the investors are actually involved in too. Thank you guys for watching my channel, Jamie Tech. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and have a wonderful day.